As we have seen in video one, this is the integer spiral that determines the spiral trajectory of any given number of the form 6x plus r minus 1. The question that we could ask here is how can we determine the output for any given input without using the spiral? We know we can count on the spiral forward and backward, but can we just by being given the input value calculate the output? It turns out that this can be done using two equations. One equation governs numbers when the input is positive, and one governs numbers when the input is negative. Here's the equation for positive inputs, and x is the input here, and this p is just signifying positive input, and the equation for a negative input is this equation. All of these equations can be proven, but we will not do so in these videos. Now, we'll take a look at an example. Let's say we choose x equals 17. What will be the output when x is 17? What we will do is to plug 17 into the equation, and we will need to select the value of k that will give us an integer output. Now these are Diophantine equations, so we're seeking for integer outputs. If we do that, the value of k, and there can only be one value of k that will correspond to each input number. The value of k that will give us an integer output is 4. If we do that, we calculate, we get negative 3. If we look at a number, say a number that's negative, say negative 10, we do the same thing. In this case, we will choose k to be 3, then the output is 4. So these two equations, these two Diophantine equations, can be used to calculate the output given any input. So we just saw that 17 the output for 17 is 4. Now if we, or negative 3 rather, if we start at 17 here and count 17 steps forward, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, we see that the output is indeed negative 3. Likewise for negative 10, we saw that the output was 4. If we move 10 steps backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we see the output is 4. So those two Diophantine equations are able to calculate the output for any given input. This table shows us the equation that corresponds to different values of k. So when k is 1 in the positive Diophantine equation, then we have this equation when k is 2, which is indicated by the 2, the subscript 2 on the f, then this is the equation we have when k is 3, this is the equation we have, and we go all the way up to k 12. Likewise, for the Diophantine equation that accepts negative inputs, we have when k is 1, we have this equation. Uh, this is indicated by this negative 1. It's saying this equation accepts negative values and k is 1. When k is 2, we have this equation and likewise for k all the way up to 12. Now it's very interesting. In fact, we just looked at 17. We can see 17 here gives the output negative 3. k is 4. So 2 to the power of 4 is 16. We looked at negative 10, which gave the output 4 when k equals to 3. Now, there are several interesting things to observe in this table, uh, one of which is the output. The outputs here actually fall into just six categories, six sets. We have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, which are multiples of 3, 
and we have negative 2, negative 5, negative 8, negative 11, negative 14, and you can see them listed over here. So the, the point here is that this output repeats here. Every sixth steps forward in terms of k values. So if k is 1, we add 6. k is 7, it's going to give us the same output values. k13 will give us the same output values. k19, so we're, we're thinking about an arithmetic sequence with common difference of 6. The same thing for over here. And the outputs over here are the same as the outputs over here. And they do repeat every sixth, every addition of six to the value of k. So remarkably interesting that the outputs turn out to be like this. Now, if we look at not just the outputs, but if we look at the equations more carefully, we will see that the D, the numerators, the numerators are all three, negative three, okay, and, and this alternate, three, negative three, three, negative three, and so on. Likewise, for the negative, the equations that cover negative inputs, the constants, because these are all linear equations, the constants, we can see what the constants are, and the denominator of the constants is the same as the denominator of the coefficient or the slope in this case, or gradient if we prefer that word. Now, the numerators of the constants for the equations for positive inputs are 1, 1, 3, 5, 11, 21, 43, 85. 171, 341, 683. If we look carefully at these values, so these are the k values, and these are the numerators of the constants, just the numerators of the constants, then what we will see is something very interesting. So I'll just read this. A careful look at the values of c, k reveals that if k is prime and k is greater than or equal to 5, then k divides ck. For example, 5 divides 5, we can see here, 7 divides 21, 11 divides 241, 13 divides 1365, and this is remarkable, okay? This is remarkable, but this is not a coincidence as the sequence CK, which equals to uh, this expression, is the jacobs thal sequence, which here is the sequence reference in the online encyclopedia for integer sequences. Now, this sequence has direct links to Mersenne primes and Fermat-Little theorem. So this is this intricate yet clear-cut link between the collapse conjecture and primes is definitely a pleasant surprise. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the connection between the collapse conjecture and primes. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment as I really want to get public feedback and please Share this video with anyone you think is interested in it. Thank you very much.